My name is Elijah Cole, and I'll be presenting our paper, When Does Contrastive Visual Representation Learning Work? Self-supervised learning has come a long way. Recent work has shown that it is possible for self-supervision to produce representations competitive with those learned from full supervision. However, most self-supervised learning papers pre-train only on ImageNet. What if the application I care about does not resemble ImageNet? Under what conditions can I expect self-supervised learning to work well? To approach this question, we study four aspects of self-supervised learning. First is dataset size. If you want to get close to supervised performance, how much unlabeled data do you need for pre-training? And how much labeled data do you need for linear classifier training or fine-tuning? Second is data domain. How important is the domain shift between the images used for pre-training and the images used for downstream supervised training? Third is data quality. What happens if your pre-training images are somehow corrupted or distribution shifted with respect to your downstream domain? Fourth is task granularity. Do self-supervised representations work well for fine-grained classification? We will discuss a few selected results. Please see the paper for the rest. Let's discuss dataset size. There are two important notions of dataset size. First is the amount of unlabeled data used for pre-training. The more unlabeled data you use, the more computationally expensive pre-training becomes. Second is the amount of labeled data used for supervised training. Labels are expensive, so we'd like to use as few as possible. Let's take a look at some ImageNet performance numbers. On the x-axis, we have the amount of labeled data used for training a linear classifier. On the y-axis, we have the top one accuracy on ImageNet. The black curve shows the performance of end-to-end -end training on a given amount of labeled data. As we add more labeled data, accuracy increases. Eventually, we reach the performance we'd expect from a fully supervised model. If we don't have much supervision available, we can train a linear classifier on self-supervised features. We can repeat this analysis with less unlabeled pre-training data, which reduces performance. Self-supervised learning only gets close to fully supervised performance when lots of labels are available. When we have few labels, performance is nowhere near fully supervised. For more challenging datasets like INAT21, the low-shot performance gap is even larger. In fact, for INAT21, the gap between supervised and self-supervised learning is large, even in the high data regime. We will return to this observation shortly. We also note that the marginal benefit of moving from 500,000 to 1 million pre-training images is minimal. In many applications, doubling pre-training time for an extra 1 to 2% performance is not worthwhile. We can repeat these studies with fine-tuning instead of linear classifiers, but the conclusions are similar. Getting close to fully supervised performance requires a lot of labels, and the marginal benefit of additional pre-training data shrinks quickly. Self-supervised learning cannot yet achieve good absolute performance with few labels. Now let's consider task granularity. Fine-grained classification involves distinguishing between categories that differ in subtle ways. The state-of-the-art fine-grained classification dataset is INAT21. We use the hierarchical structure of INAT21 to evaluate trained classifiers at different levels of granularity. Here we show the performance of a fully supervised network trained on INAT21 and evaluated at different levels of granularity. Unsurprisingly, performance increases at coarser levels. After all, it's easier to tell plant versus animal apart than it is to tell two bird species apart. The orange curve shows the performance of a linear classifier trained on top of SimCLR. The gap between SimCLR and supervised grows rapidly as the evaluation is made more fine-grained. Newer methods like BYOL work better, but the gap remains quite large. We see the same general pattern for ImageNet when we use the standard WordNet hierarchy, but the gap between supervised and self-supervised grows less rapidly. On ImageNet, self-supervised learning matches supervised. On INAT21, self-supervised learning lags far behind. There's much more in the paper. For instance, adding pre-training data from a different domain can actually hurt performance. Self-supervised learning is more sensitive to corrupted pre-training data than supervised learning. And combining representations from different domains does not immediately lead to better generalization. Thanks for watching. Please see the paper for the rest of the results.